Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Alchemy with Zero Phase. Uh, my name's Eric, and I am going to do a video here to hopefully help some of you understand how you can use Stable Diffusion to monetize stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people have asked, like, how, how do I produce things I can sell on Etsy? You know, and there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to try and do this. And uh, You know, some of the simplest things you can do are, are t-shirt designs, sticker designs, you can do posters and things like that. I think uh, uh, Stable Diffusion does an awesome job of producing posters. I think it'll take a little more work because you want to make sure you get a lot of the details. You want to make sure things look proper. And, you know, a lot of the models, they produce weird, quirky hands and, and other things. And, and uh, so posters are a little harder. And I'll show you how to do some of those near the end of the video here, I think. But I want to start off by showing you how to produce something like this. So, I, yeah, this looks very simple. But this is a full-on sticker that you can send to uh, Etsy and through their little sticker processing, whatever. It's got the white border. This is a transparency. It's a PNG transparency produced out of Stable Diffusion, and I'll show you how that's done. And uh, how to do this with any animal, cute animal, you know, or any concept you can think of, okay? And, um, you know, obviously you're going to get hits and misses, but uh, with this process, you should have more hits than misses. Uh, so the other thing I'm going to show you how to do is some t-shirt designs. Um, again, this is a transparency, uh, kind of an abstract face, you know, uh, that can be printed on a black shirt, on a white shirt. And because it's transparency, this should show up beautifully on the material without like any black square or anything like that. All right. Uh, just a couple more here to kind of show off what this is capable of doing. Uh, they're very centered. Uh, you can adjust that later if you needed to, if they weren't fully centered. But uh, because of how these are, these would uh, flow really well onto, uh, you know, what you could even use them on Redbubble is another good place. Uh, but uh, just because they are uh, transparencies, they will apply very well to a lot of those processes. Here's one uh, with my colors uh, as a more abstract design, just geometric that uh, can be printed up on something. Uh, something like this would probably go really well. Like, like on Redbubble, they allow you to put it on multiple types of products and, uh, uh, and sell it that way. So if you can come up with some great designs, I'm sure you'll be able to sell some. Uh, these are fun to produce, easy to produce. So let's dive in. I'll start showing you how this is done. So the first thing we're going to do, though, is go into um, Stable Diffusion here and just go over a few things. So I've yet to find a model that produces these things as good as the Illuminati Diffusion. Now, I talk this, this model up all the time. This was, this model, it may not be very good at, like, hands, okay? But when it comes to doing a lot of what I do, and especially these particular things it, it no other model I've ever seen comes close to doing this so um, we're going to be doing the Illuminati diffusion we are going to be just doing the prime negative that I have on my style sheet um, and then let's see I think we're going to keep it square when doing this now you can change that but honestly I think keeping it square uh, is best so we're going to lock this into one to one um, that what you know for those of you who are wondering what this is, uh, you don't see it in your installation. I have a video on it, it's uh, uh, an extension called Aspect Ratio Helper, and there's a little Java thing that you enable in it, and it puts this little thing here so you can select different aspect ratios or set it to whatever you want and lock it. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then we're going to turn this up to uh, I think 960 is what I like to play around at, okay. Um, Illuminati Diffusion does really well at resolutions higher than the 768. It is a 2.1 768 model, but it does really well up to 960 to 10, and even up to 1024. And we are going to do, because we're going to be working, working with multiple prompts to find what we want, um, I think we're going to just leave this at 1, and um, then we'll add the prompts down in here in just a little bit. Okay, so really that's about it when it comes to Stable Diffusion. We'll be getting into the Extras tab here and what we'll be doing in there. So the settings for Quick Workflow, you can come in here, preset this to your 4X Ultra Sharp. 
Um, you'll want if you don't have that upscaler, you're going to want to get it. I'll see if I can leave a link in the uh, in the description for it so that you can download it quickly and get it put in. And then down here, you're going to want to make sure you have the remove background extension. So that extension, if I find the right one here, uh, let's see. It's not the ABG, that's the automatic background removal. It's a little different. Let's see if, I think it's the NPW. Let's check that real quick here. Nope, negative prompt wait. They named this, this one a little different. There it is. So web UI remove background. So let's go to this one. I just want to make sure this is the right one. Yeah, pretty sure this is it. Okay, we'll leave a link for that. I'll double check it. I'll leave a link for it in the, uh, the description as well. Okay. So what that does is it puts a, uh, an extension down here. It allows you to select the type of model you want to use to remove the background. For what we're going to be doing, we're going to use the U2Net. Okay. And we're also going to be using the alpha matting option. What this does is it removes the background, but then it changes it to a PNG and with alpha blending or alpha transparency, sorry, alpha transparency, uh, basically making the background transparent. Uh, and for Etsy, a lot of other places, and if, in order to do the stickers, you have to do that. You have to have a transparency to give them. Okay, and that's it here. So let's go back over to the text image. Now what we need to do is get some prompts. We're gonna go down here to the script. We're gonna load in prompts from file or text box, okay? Um, and this will allow us to load in multiple prompts. So uh, I do have a, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to my uh, prompt generator because I wanna generate multiple prompts for this. And I am going to bring over, I did already create one for this. I'll show you uh, what this is gonna do. And you can grab the prompts that this produces and use them yourself if you want. So what I'm gonna ask my prompt generator to do I want 20 prompts, 10 words each, sticker art for specific cute animals, white outlines surrounded by black background. Okay, submit that. And just basically watch the magic happen as it goes through and produces the prompts for this. It will hit a point um, where it needs to be, needs to continue. And I love how they integrated this continued uh, generating. They used to have to say, please continue or something like that. And this actually works really well. I'll show you, there's just one thing you have to watch for when you copy and paste this into the uh, multi-prompt box. And we're done. And then from here, all we do is we come up here to the top and we select copy and we switch back over to stable diffusion. We're gonna go down to the list of prompt inputs, paste that in there. And the one thing I told you you need to watch for is at the point where ChatGPT asked you to continue, it puts a line break in there. And so you have to come back over here, just hit backspace twice, make sure it's combined, okay? We're going to make sure, let's see, we're gonna put this on uh, sampling steps 20. And uh, you know, for speed's sake, we're gonna go ahead and set it to Euler A. I think that should work fine. So let's go ahead. Oh, one thing that does help with these is taking the config scale up to like eight. You can even go like to 8.5. We're gonna try eight. I think that should work fine. Let's hit generate. Yeah, right off the bat, we're getting an awesome sticker. Great uh, white outlines. This one, not so much, but it, it, it could be a decent sticker. That one's gonna be a good sticker. Again, you know, you're dealing with the AI and so you're gonna get hits and misses. Cute panda. That one will turn into something you could probably use on a t-shirt, honestly. That one's not bad. Okay, we're gonna pause it for the rest of the video and come back and we'll go through the rest of them. Okay, we're done generating and let's start at the beginning here. Just gonna go through these like, so I'm gonna show, kind of point out the qualities of a good uh, sticker. This one is okay. Problem you're going to run into though is you got a lot of intricacies in the edges here. I'm not entirely sure how Etsy's uh, label or sticker printing or sticker cutting services will handle that. Typically they want a little bit of a 
gradual curve on stuff. This one also has uh, <laughs> an extra foot. Not that many people would notice that, but you know, artists do. Okay, the problem with this one here is you got a lot of intricacies and the remove background uh, may have problems with this. This might be a decent um, like t-shirt design. So we'll try that. This one would probably be a good sticker. You know, the cutter will just go right around that and, and cut that all out, okay? Again, that one may be a good like t-shirt design. Panda, not bad. I'd probably remove the uh, the bamboo leaves here. So as you can see, we're gonna get some that are good and some that are bad. That one will be great. I mean, it's just a circle. Okay, it does hit the edges here, but that that's okay. Okay, um, this one would be a good one. So you're gonna get, like I said, that one's a great one. Cute ones. Not so, you know, others are not so cute, but most of these are pretty cute. So, anyway, okay, so as you can see, we got some that are stickers. So, what we're gonna do now, let's go back and pick one that uh, we're gonna pick a couple, okay? Uh, let's go back, we're gonna pick this one here. I don't know, let's, let's pick a different one. Let's go with, the, I love raccoons. So, uh, we're gonna pick a raccoon, okay? And so, the next step in this is we're gonna send this over to the extras tab, okay? Puts it in here, as you can see, it's got this gray background, and that's fine, as long as it's solid, or semi-solid, okay? Come down here, we've already got our Remove Background selected. We're on our Upscaler 4X Ultra Shop, because we do want this to be bigger. We want to upscale it first, and then uh, cut it, okay? And it should be big enough to do as a sticker, okay? I don't know exactly what the, the size requirements are, uh, on Etsy or other places for sticker, but I'll let you guys figure that out. If you need to upscale it more, you can do a latent upscale and then come in here and do another upscale on it, make it as big as you want. Uh, I've got a, a, a video or two that show you how to do some different upscales. Um, and then um, that's it. So you select that, make sure your uh, alpha matting is selected and hit generate. Give it a few minutes here. If you're, if you're, already, if you're already in the process of doing this, it should process it fairly decent. If there's a lot of details in the edges, it will take longer, okay? This one probably won't take as long as some of those other ones, like those uh, fa the uh, abstract color ones I showed you for t-shirt designs. Um, but uh, the background remover really does try to hit all the little edges. Okay. And there we go. And as you can see, it is a transparency. It's got plenty of white edge. Um, it did include a little bit of a black edge on here, but that doesn't matter. Uh, that one would actually be a wonderful sticker. So very cute. So let's do it one more time. Just to walk through the process, we'll pick another one. Um, that one so this one's not a good pick right here. It goes off the edges. It's just, you know, it's a throwaway. Squirrel's great. Send that over. So we're going to send it to extras. Four times ultra starting. We're gonna, since we're in a process, this is our workflow. We've already got a set. Just hit generate. Now here's the thing you could do. You could exclude this whole process and do a batch convert using uh, the batch process or batch from directory. Um, the batch from directory would work phenomenally with this. Uh, one of the reasons why is because with my prompt generator, when it generates prompts, it assigns an ID to uh, each one, each each generate uh, you know generated thing, and I've got my uh, stable diffusion set to create a prompt with the first. I don't remember what it was. It's like up to that many characters, so it creates a folder with that, so that it creates a unique folder for every set of generations I do. Okay, and then what that allows me to do is to come up here into uh, what we were doing with extras. And I can plop in the input directory, which would be the directory, that specific directory. The output directory, I'd do the same thing. I put the same directory in, and then just put a slash, like, and then upscale, or finished, or whatever you want to do uh, as the output directory. And if it doesn't exist, it creates it. Okay. So let's, I can just show you a quick example here. Give me just a second. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the directory in here that it is in. So as you can see, it's on my H drive, personal hobbies, AI art output, text to image images. And then there's the unique directory. The only images that are in that directory are the ones we generated under the text image under that particular generation. Okay. And we don't have to sit there and, and, and nitpick and whatever over each image. Then we just take this, copy that, paste that into the output directory, and then over here we do um, upscale. I've used that before. Okay, and that's it. Um, you know, just to uh, speed things up, let's just go like this. We're gonna oh, we're gonna shut off. Sorry, let's shut this. Put that back to two. But we're gonna shut this off. We're not gonna upscale. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to run it through the uh, background remover, and it's just gonna cycle through all of them. Okay, and because I'm not upscaling it, um, should be a little bit quicker. Yeah, I can see it already created the folder. And I'm watching these images come across here. So let's go ahead and pull some of these up. So as you can see, this one wasn't so good. It kind of, you'd have to do an adjustment. We weren't going to pick that one anyway. That one actually turned out great. Now, it wouldn't be good as a sticker, but this would be great as a t-shirt design. That'd be sticker, t-shirt, sticker, t-shirt. Um, so when it does something like this on one that should have obviously been okay, like that would be a great one for a t-shirt you get the you know the circle kind of fades off or whatever but if you wanted the full circle you'd have to go into the background remover and there's some settings you could pick a different model to remove the background it might have a more success um or you could uh not worry about it uh, that's a good sticker sticker so this one was interesting it had a little thing up in the corner here and the background remover took it out that's cool you see, that one turned out great, the one that had the circle. That would be, honestly, that would be great for t-shirt or sticker. <laughs> so as you can see, you kind of get a feel for which ones you feel are going to be good stickers, okay? It's awesome. So that's a good way to quickly go through it, and then you can just quickly pick or choose which ones you want to keep and really speed up your workflow on that. Okay, cool. Next thing we're going to jump into is the t-shirt designs. And I do have, again, another thing set up on this. Let's go ahead. Now we'll just leave that uh, as is. We'll come back here. We're going to edit this. And I've got a different prompt for this, prompt request for my Stable Diffusion uh, prompt generator. Paste that in. So we're going to do five prompts, 10 words each. So I originally did uh, abstract t-shirt design featuring a face in the center. You can keep that if you want. This is the part of it that you want to change. Um, I mean, if you're using my, my prompt generator, okay? If you are not, you can take these prompts here, copy them out if you want, and you'll end up uh, changing out about right here to uh, right here. So, or, you know, right here. So basically somewhere in the center there. This is why I love my prompt generator. You don't have to worry about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in here um, let's put in a uh, uh, simple digital illustration of, um, I don't know, um, an epic future, futuristic robot in a big city. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how this turns out. Give it a second. Pops out our prompts. And this time I only asked for five, which is fine. Okay, we're going to switch this over to here. This is all about improving and increasing your workflow speed. So you can you know, really get these out. You're not spending a lot of time uh, trying to think about it or thinking about creating the prompts. Um, it just, it, it, it really helps speed things along. Yeah, that one's not gonna work, so work out too well. Okay, 
So let's come down here. What did it do? We got epic features to grow towers over busy city. Yeah, so it missed something here in the prompt. What did I take out? Oh, whoops. Yeah, I missed a, uh, the most important part of it. Can't believe I missed this. Okay, we're going to put this back and edit. You got to have the uh, t shirt design in there, whether it's abstract or not. I'm going to actually leave it abstract in there. I think that actually helps keep it centered and adds that cool border around stuff. Uh, teacher's design featuring a simple digital illustration of an epic futuristic robot in a big city. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I was, I'm like, why are we getting full images here? That doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I don't like that. Give me my IDs. There we go. We want it simple. We're not asking for a lot of detail, confusing the uh, image generation AI. We're going to copy those again. Come over here, paste those in there. Let's hit generation, generate again. There we go. Much better. Maybe not at that one. <laughs> that one would be pretty cool. Yeah, we're looking for the ones that are centered. Here's the thing we could do. Uh, we're not getting a lot of that. So what we could do is um, in the prompt here, what we can do is go uh, t-shirt design. And what we're going to do is Put an emphasis around that 1.4. Generate some more prompts. I did emphasize sticker art in that one. It's emphasizing some different stuff, but t shirt design is all in all of them. And maybe the t sticker art might be the other one we would want to emphasize. So let's just test it out and see. You know, Going through this like this, like that one right there was good. I like that one. There we go. Ooh, that one's awesome. I love that. And we're not getting good results here. Oh, that was the other thing I totally forgot to do. T-shirt. <laughs> what does it do? It emphasizes it even more. Or brings it out even more. So let's do that. Emphasize that because we do not want an actual t shirt in there. Oh my heck. There we go. At least on that first one, that's good. This first prompt's doing pretty good at getting us what we want. The second one, not so much. Yeah, not sure why it's throwing t-shirt into there. Okay, give me just a second here. Oh, that one was going to be good. So we got a couple in here that actually do produce some good ones, like that first and last one. First, t-shirt design is emphasized. Sticker art, t-shirt designs won't emphasize in that one. Let's get rid of these here and focus on these. And let's bring this down to seven because when you bring it up, it really kind of takes a lot of stuff literally. So if you have a t-shirt in there, you might keep trying to produce t-shirt. A t-shirt, I should say. There, no. So are we emphasizing? Yeah, let's stop emphasizing t-shirt design. Stop emphasizing that one. So I didn't do that before. And again, like, you know, this, it's different every time. So um, it's just play around with it until you get the settings you want. Yeah, that's much better. So these be interesting. Um, so what we're going to do with this, same thing we did with the stickers. Okay, we're going to send it over to... 
uh, the background or extras tab and do the background removal. And what's you know, I can already tell what's going to happen with this. It's going to look really cool. Um, go back over to single image. Okay, so this image has some faded stuff here. Okay, and this is going to be interesting to see what it does. So we are going to upscale, I think, on this. And you may want to upscale, like I do a latent upscale on it uh, using the image to image, just up the resolution on it to add a little more detail. Just for display purposes, this is what we're, how we're going to do this here. So we're going to double it and remove the background on it and just hit generate. Let's see what it does here. So this may take a, a, a little bit longer than the other ones because there's a lot more intricate detail that's having to go through here on, on the edges. So, but we'll see how it goes. While we're waiting, I really appreciate, you know, the people have joined my Discord. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what it did is it removed that whole site. So we would actually need to uh, either change the background model removing it. Let's see what that one does. We may have to change the foreground threshold. That'll help too. Give me a second here. Anyway, thanks for joining my Discord. I love seeing everybody there and the responses and feedback we get and the conversations are awesome. It's cool seeing how other people are using my uh, uh, prompt generator too. So it's taking a little while longer because we chose a different model so it's having to load that micro model into, into VRAM. Yeah, that one took a while longer. We're still not quite getting the result we want. It's still cutting out things on the side over there. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change the background threshold a little bit, I think, back down here for the 5. Try it again to see if that ha has an effect on it. So as you can see, it did increase it a little bit on the side here, but we're still not getting the, the same full effect here. So we're going to, and that model for some reason takes forever. We're going to switch back over to this one here. And we're going to change, so changing the background threshold back seemed to have helped, but I'm afraid if we go too far back, it's just going to include everything. And it just kind of feels that way. We're getting, I don't know if it's cutting out this here. Some of these may not be good for this. You know, it depends on how much is there. So, and it looks like the graphic, in the graphic, it looks like these are kind of hitting out at the edge. And that may be where it's having a problem. So it's kind of cutting up through here thinking this is the edge. So let's try it one more time. What we're gonna do is uh, the foreground threshold we're going to increase to see if we can't bring that out. We finished quickly, and this one does a really good job of cutting off, you know, the excess, but it's still not including that one edge. This is where you kind of start like, oh, eh, let's see what it does when we you know, really throw down the threshold there. Because it feels like it's not doing anything going the other direction. Include it a little bit. But let's narrow that down even more. So whatever it is, I've tried a few different things, and I still can't get it to give me the same background on that one. It's just the image style. It just doesn't like that one. And I'm kind of getting a feeling we may end up running in the same problem with this. And one of the reasons why is because we're getting this, it's not a black background. So I think what we're going to do is try generating a few more things here, a couple different prompts to see if we can't get a different result. So give me just a second. Okay, sorry about that delay. And I really figured out kind of what the problem was. Because t-shirt designs are very simple, there's a single object. Uh, abstract or character or whatever, I was adding too much detail into it. Uh, when I was requesting this, uh, I also added centered on this. 
uh, to kind of try and center it a little bit better. But a simple digital illustration, and I put an epic futuristic robot in a city. And so what that tells the AI, not the ChatGPT, but the, the image generation AI, is it draws the focus back and tries to include too much. And so it was having a hard time with that. So I had to generate some more prompts just focused on the epic futuristic robot. Okay, and we brought those over, threw those into ChatGPT, or excuse me, Stable Diffusion, got a much better result. This is more what I was thinking we would do. And uh, these look awesome. These would be great on t-shirts. Like they just, there's a lot of flair, uh, a lot of uh, character to them. So very cool stuff. So we're gonna grab that one. We're gonna send that over to Extras. We're gonna make sure we're, all our settings are normal. I think, uh, the uh, these settings were like 250, but in 10, but not, I don't know if that's going to matter too much. Uh, we're going to switch this back over to U U2 Net, and that's fine. We're going to hit generate on that one, and boy, oh, uh, we got it. Look at that. Cut out the edges just right. You know, you could take this in if you want to touch it up in any way, form or fashion. You know, on the edges, you can take it into GIMP, Photoshop, whatever. But I think this did a beautiful job on this. That's going to look so fantastic on a T-shirt if I did t-shirts <laughs> anyway uh, same thing we we'll go back let's grab one more just to show that, that wasn't a fluke okay um, that, that one's awesome I love that one let's grab that one throw that one over here and do the same thing with that and again another banger look at that you can see the transfer you can see the image behind it you got all the edges right that just looks absolutely fantastic beautiful design you know, again, you probably want to run that through um, doing a latent and upscale or upscale a little bit more. So when you put it on a t-shirt, it's got some good res to it. Uh, but the transparency on that would look great. You're not going to have just a square black box. Uh, I have to admit that when I first, I actually tried Etsy for a little while, or uh, uh, Redbubble. Actually, I have a Redbubble store still because it doesn't cost anything to have it. They just take a percentage of whatever you sell. I haven't sold a thing. Because all the stuff I put on there is like these square things, and they always have black backgrounds, and it just looks horrible, and I've just never done anything with it. But taking this, it's kind of giving me some ideas. I might re-approach re it. Uh, somebody kind of gave me the idea of doing this video, and I rethought about it and, and re-approached it. I uh, thought, you know what, I might be able to do better now that I've got my prompt generator, and sure enough, yeah, I, I was able to do some pretty fantastic stuff with it. Uh, again, I, I just wanted to keep this simple. Uh, I know I'm a little over 30 minutes on this, but uh, this was really fun. Being able to see this and uh, get myself inspired to do something more with my art, too. And uh, hopefully it inspires somebody else. So there was one last thing that um, you can do on a lot of stores like Etsy and, and even especially Redbubble. Is they, when you're doing your designs... You can do things with patterns, um, tileable patterns. And so this is actually something, it's a function built into Stable Diffusion called tiling right here. And we could, you know, I don't know what this is going to look like. Um, and we're just going to touch on this real briefly. So I am actually going to just leave everything else the same. We're going to put tiling. We're going to turn on tiling. So you can see what this looks like. We're going to leave this square and hit generate show you what this looks like when it gets done here <laughs> as you can see it it I'll let you watch this is a little abstract it has a hard time interpreting the robot and what we're asking as something that's tileable so I'm gonna stop that and we're gonna show you something that actually works okay so let's uh, we're gonna shut off you know, no, let's give uh, my prompt generator a try on this. We're going to do 20 words each. Uh, we're going to do a simple, uh, we're going to do five different geometric patterns for tiling. I just want to see what it does. I've never asked it this before. I might have to shorten this down to 10 words each, but um, we'll see what it comes up with here. Oh, those descriptions actually aren't bad. Okay, let's copy those out. I don't think it finishes up here. Okay, copy that. Grab this. Throw this over here. Oh. Okay. And let's 
let's just see what that looks like. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. So if you were to take this to a site like Breadbubble and their little designer thing and you set this to tile, it will tile from side to side. It'll go on infinitely. Pretty cool stuff. Cool patterns. I mean, don't know. I mean, these kind of remind me a lot of the 90s, you know, uh, trapper folder, uh, neon designs kind of thing. But, you know, somebody might like them. And you can simplify these, create even more simple designs. Um, I'm kind of curious. I do have a style here, uh, not for tiling necessarily, but I want to kind of see what it does when I tell it to do um, the intricate icon painting. It's one specifically set up for doing like these really cool just icons. Yeah, it totally jacked with it. Creates this weird abstract pattern, which will be tileable. That one's not bad. That's kind of cool. Yeah, you get some really cool stuff. Anyway, so mess around with that. You can, uh, like I said, places like uh, uh, Etsy and Redbubble, they love tileable stuff. You can tile just about anything over shirts and posters and mugs and all sorts of bizarre stuff. So have fun with it. And uh, join us on our Discord. Uh, if you want to get in and uh, join the conversation, uh, maybe drop a request in the comments. I'll throw you the link. Uh, I know the links expire every once in a while. And uh, if you haven't gotten the prompt generator, definitely get it. It definitely helps with uh, workflow. Uh, speeding things up, trying multiple things. Um, we did have to do a couple updates on it. The version 4 that I released on Friday, uh, come to find out that it its token length was slightly longer, slightly, it was a couple hundred tokens longer than what the ChatGPT version 4 will take. It'll only do 4,096 tokens. So I had to modify that one so that it was short enough and still function the same. And uh, I modified that same one also because we were finding out that in the free version of ChatGPT, um, when you put the prompt in, the prompt generator in, it comes back with some weird response saying, I am incapable of generating visually descriptive prompts for image generation. But then you start typing in your request for prompts and it works just fine. So I modified it in a way that kind of tricks the AI into thinking it's part of a simulation. So it, it, it's interesting. I love it. Uh, the whole prompt engineering thing is, is fun. I, you know, got, I've been doing it for months and months and months and uh, uh, helping other people out with it. I love doing that. So love this community. Appreciate you guys. Uh, like and subscribe to the video and uh, uh, catch, us on, catch us all on the flip side, right? Who knows? <laughs> See ya.